Alright, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to do a quick deck tech on our two opponents. Yeah, for the June monthly, right? For yeah, the for the June. June monthly, and uh, I believe one person is playing the deck, and the other one will be kind of like a Disco Troll. Yeah, Troll Disco, yeah. I'm yeah. We got Disco Troll. Yeah, so I mean, just looking at it, it looks pretty standard, right? Like, uh, like a person who came to win... To win an event, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't see any. I mean, the Ruck Egg is is interesting. I don't think it's like too crazy or out of the way. I mean, I, I, I've seen it before. I've seen people play Ruck Egg, right? When it gets destroyed, you get a four four. Yeah, a four four flyer. So with Earthquake and uh, Nevin Nero's Disc, which both uh, wipe the board and destroy all permanents. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably well, going to well. do pretty well. Uh, I mean, you know, Dark Rituals. You got a little bit of discarding with the hippies and hymns, him to Torak. Uh, you know, a yeah. bit of burn, earthquake, shatter, lightning bolts. Uh, I think people kind of un underestimate the power of earthquake. Just yeah, like, yeah I, I'm a big earthquake fan. Especially I, when I you're playing like him. Disco Troll, just wipe out all the like the ground creatures, yeah. regenerate yours. Yeah, keep the troll. It's actually really berserk when you get to blow up a disc or play earthquake and keep your troll alive. Like when you. Like it, just hearing it in theory already sounds good, but when you have one or two trolls in play and you actually pull it off and then everything is gone except your trolls, it's like a huge, huge, huge swing. Very, very good. Yeah, and it uh, seems like the sideboard, you know, uh, another disc as well, a couple of underground, under uh, underworld dreams, I guess, for control decks. Uh, Only one shatter. I would have assumed uh, maybe... Yeah. A bit more... Uh, I mean, with the discs, perhaps he's feeling confident, but uh, maybe one or maybe one more shatter would have been interesting to see. Also, notable to say for the deck, though, I just want to say really quickly for the main board, uh, the four rack, right, is, like, really aggressive with the bolts. Like, that's uh, dangerous with the Nebunil's disc, but really trying to, like, show that he wants to just end that game as fast as possible. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And we have the deck. So... I mean, this is like standard. Yeah, I mean, another, another standard. Yeah, but I mean, Force Drip Mine kind of plays with your mana base a bit. I mean, uh, it's a little bit different from your standard version. I think because there's no like regrowth. At least I don't see. Yeah, oh, there is. It's there. Yeah. yeah. No, he's playing all. But there. the mana base, I'm kind of a bit concerned about, just honestly. Well, I mean, like it's not. It's not the first time that we. I mean, like Force Drip is. Uh, it's not like crazy, right? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, so well. Yeah, I mean, I, like the deck doesn't really. This deck doesn't really. If it struggles, it'll struggle because it drew all of its mana sources, or none or, of its proper or, yeah, mana sources. But, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so that's that's what you mean by the strip mine issue. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I I typically don't worry about the colors when I'm playing the deck. The only thing I'm worried about is did I not draw my counter spells when I needed them, or did, yeah, like, or did I make the mistake of countering the wrong thing? Otherwise, I find. Uh, Stack takes care of itself. Yeah. I mean, we've seen time and time again, and just from like the last Tundra's challenge, like the deck, you know, it just performs well yeah, in general. Guess, yeah. I mean, you do have to so, know what you're doing. You can't like it's not not to say it, it, like when I say it plays itself, I just mean like it's that strong, right? Like it is yeah. a strong. It's among the strongest decks for a reason. Like, uh, but you do still need to know what you're doing. Like, if you do make the wrong counter spell decision. But I mean, like, sometimes you just draw poorly, even, like... Yeah, 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 but, like, you know, that being the only reason... <laughs> yeah, the yes, the only yeah, reason like, for losing, I yeah. guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you need to be careful about when you use your Black Lotus. You need to be careful about how and when you use your Brain Geyser. You need to be careful about what kind of value you accrue with your recalls and your regrowths. And I think, like, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen is people get too obsessed with the library to draw... And they're just so focused on drawing that card from the library instead of just me being a little bit more reactive and a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I mean, the, then, like, well, this is this is one of the decks that will benefit the most from aggressive librarying, but but still, you need to know when to stop. Like, yeah. there's a point where you need to do the thing that needs to be done, and you have to always be able to identify when it's time to stop librarying. But one thing I notice here is two recall instead of four tome. So I'm curious to see if that matters. This tome is important. Yeah, we'll see. All right, match number one. Players are cutting their decks. I love the playmats. Those playmats are not something you see every day. Um, 
notable yeah. to say that we're watching this from a from like a first person. Well, it's like still above above the ground here, but yeah. like uh, usually we're from the side, right? Like this is a, a new yeah. This going. is like a new kind of like approach. I kind of like this one. You like this more? Interesting. Uh, Interesting. I mean, we'll like see. it's not. Uh, it's clear. It's very clear. Like like it, <laughs> so like it's it's probably not going to be an issue for anybody. I don't think. But it definitely isn't isn't the norm. Like, yeah, it isn't the norm. But I mean, oh, the deck's got looks like two to three wow. counter spells. So, so <laughs> like, good thing and bad thing, right? When what I was talking about in the deck tech was sometimes you just don't find the counter spells. But now with three in your hand, you might be tempted, right? You might get greedy and want to use them at the wrong time or because you feel threatened. But uh, you really have to be careful with how you use your counter spells in this deck. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the play, if you're you know, depends, like, if you're going first, if you're not. I mean... Like, sometimes protecting your stuff is more important than stopping what they're doing. And if you just yeah. aggressively use your counter spells because you have them and you get scared about stuff, like, that's that's another way you're just going to lose the game. So, like, you know, sometimes you play... I don't know how often you play the deck, but, like, uh, you get a tome in play. You know, it's kind of when you... As soon as you get that tome in play and you'll have two mana left over, or you can tap the tome to draw a card... And you've got two mana left over for that counter spell. When you're in that position, it's usually either you're knocking on like game over his door, and you can't be in that position if you use your counter spells too early. Yeah, so. I, I personally would have mulliganed that hand. Let's see, we, the, the, the counter. I, I, I would keep it. Don't get me wrong. I would keep it. You'd mulligan that. I think so. I I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Like I, I like, think three is a bit too much. Bit I think fun. two is like yeah. the right number for opening hand counter spells. He, he had lands and counter spells, or did he have something else in there? Was I was kind of quickly shown. It wasn't exactly clear, but I'm, I'm assuming he has at least a few lands in there. I thought we'll see, yeah. but I mean, like if he gets like a him, if he gets him on turn one, and his mana base is gone, the counter spells are useless at that point. I mean, I guess, but yeah, I know. But when, when I, I'm pl when I'm playing control, what I want to see is a land drop every turn. And I want to have my counter spells so I can use them, like when it's time. So I mean, I like I like I like the hand personally, but I also fancy myself kind of like a like a slower control player where like I will be patient with those cards. So I like just to have them. So, like I'll use them when I need them. At least I have them. Like, kind okay. of thing. We'll see. I mean, the other card was a chaos orb. Okay, I just so I saw it as chaos orb. Mulligan the uh, disco troll player. Down to five. Oh boy. That's a, rough, that's a rough start. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes it's the magic gods that decides your fate, yeah. not you. Especially against the deck, uh, you don't want to start at five. But hippie, ri hip, like ritual hippie, unanswered, can be a three card hand that can win the game. So yeah, I mean, if see him like right now, so yeah, the counter spell doesn't do a damn thing. Yeah, but he did have the chaos orb to help justify the hand, though. So maybe he loses one. Uh, one land or one counter spell, but he will be able to deal with the hippie. So it's not like yeah. it's not brutal, brutal, brutal. You can go deeper with that with the mulligan decision if he didn't have the chaos orb in his hand. That's true. So now follow up with swamp him, tack with for, tack with hippie. That would be yeah, that, <laughs> that would, would be, be punish. Yeah. But still, like you can't necessarily. Uh, There's one counter yeah, spell out of hand. I don't think you can necessarily take your mulligan decision strictly off of what may or may not happen from a like a turn one swamp hippie ritual turn two him. I don't know. Hey, I think it's okay. I think it's a good good opening hand uh, for both players. So well, it like, appears he drew an ancestral. For what I can see, yeah, an ancestral mm, being played. I don't know about the ancestral here because, like, your hope. Okay, like he got so lucky. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you don't draw a blue source. Now you can't counterspell and blow up the hippie, so like, I I mean, yeah. Wow. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it certainly paid off for him. It certainly paid off. But. Like the luck of that. So I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in a position where now you know the troll player gets second land hymns, and then you have to choose between do I counter the him or do I blow up the hippie? Yeah. So targeting the. Hippie. Yeah, so I, I have to ask because this is like a conversation between players. Like the gentleman's flip for like chaos orb. Are you pro like f gentleman's flip or are you like you have to flip? No, I mean physically. Kitchen table and our monthly events. You just point at the cart and it's destroyed. Maybe if it's like a you know like a 
like a tundra wolf challenge or a lobster con like one like where where it's more serious you know quote unquote serious yeah. where like the victory means something or whatever uh, you find flip it but typically speaking not just point to the card like um, yeah I, i'm done flipping magic <clears throat> cards off of heights and <laughs> yeah but some people argue but that's the charm of old school you know <laughs> to flip uh see now like this cultural player one land oh finally getting a second land drop yeah so playing a bad lines playing yeah, a insane. him counter spell well either way i look at i look at it as like a win kind of like even if you're not discarding two he still takes one yeah he's still getting rid of a counter spell from hand i mean which is like huge considering he already has like two out of the five counter spells in his deck mana dream being the fifth yeah so i mean regrowth is yeah, regrowth. Okay. <laughs> regrowth number speak, six. Speak of the devil. <laughs> oh, wow. Taking one. Ancestral, answer. yeah. That's being like... Probably wanting to avoid rack damage. And it's yeah. just, I mean... Well, also, I mean, like, who doesn't want to draw three cards for one blue? I mean, yeah, that's... But also, considering how much mana he's got and the fact that the troll player was on five and only has two cards, I think now you want to find that uh, uh, tome as fast as possible. The yeah. tome will also help you get it above the uh, the racks. I mean, if I was like the disco troll player, if I see like tome coming out, and you know, with the ancestral, I, mm -hmm. I probably would just scoop at this point but, because it's so hard to get a comeback from yeah. that. I honestly, I don't know. Um, like ancestral was very likely the correct decision, but I think there is an argument he made for him to have just taken a, a counter spell. Like he he can get. He could get blown out by a disc or a... Yeah. But again, like, drawing three is probably always the right... <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah. Usually the right decision, so... Not trying to make any uh, judgments about that regrowth. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I've been guilty of just wanting to, like, draw as many cards as possible, and then, yeah. you know, choosing the wrong card with regrowth. Playing a Tundra... So I wonder if he's gonna... But the position just gets so much stronger and stronger for the deck as they drop lands. It's just so good to be able to play mana sources every turn. Yeah, swing in with the factory. Get bolted. Probably bolt it, you know. Mm. Hmm. Like, I just finished talking about how important mana is and... Yeah. I mean, is that yes, something yes, really... He like, wants see, a like, counter spell? See, like, that's, that... what I'm, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is right? Is like... Like, are you going to risk, are you going to waste a counter spell to save this factory when A, you didn't have to attack, or B, you're going to want that, see, like, I don't, that's, you need that counter spell for, like, much more important things. So, like, yeah, like you said, if he draws, like, a, a, a ritual and plays a disc, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to want to play that, you know, want to yeah. counter that disc more than anything. I mean, I'm pretty sure you might have a disenchant to yeah. resolve that issue, so maybe he's feeling confident. Uh, even without having a counter spell in hand. See, but like, especially if you're going to be of the mentality to save your factories this early on with counter spells, I think that increases the argument to have regrowth a, a counter spell prior. Yeah. Because now I don't think he's got any more in his hand. And he's in a very vulnerable. Like, you're in a vulnerable position. I mean, like, he's still ahead because of the mulligan and everything. And just look at the board, right, at the same time. So it's. Yeah. I'm potentially over dramatizing what's happening here, but. I really value my counter spells. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't agree with countering the uh, factory, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. at this point, he's so far ahead; it's going to be hard for you know the the, the troll player yeah. to really catch up. I mean, it, it is also notable that should a disc come down and get used. It's also going to blow up, like you know, all of the troll player stuff too. The mocks will go, the two racks will go. So maybe Peter's just taking the gamble that, like, whatever you want to play your disc, play your disc. I'll make that trade with you. Troll, okay, troll, troll blocks factor. Plow kills troll. I mean, we saw mana drain. Okay. So he's got three colorless for his next main phase. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we'll see what he gets to it's do. It's three with that. colors, right? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, it is. All right. <laughs> Strip mine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah all right. So he's going to dump probably the mana into the factory. Yeah. And seems swing for the two. Thing. Would be nice if there was a tome to play with that mana or activate. But it's okay. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't be too greedy here. <laughs> I mean, I think he's happy with his position. There's one of these situations, right, where we're kind of disagreeing with some plays that are being made, but they're still leading to a victory. So Yeah, I mean, this is like an, always an argument, you know. Okay, uh, there we go. A turn late, but also, you know, never too late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just just always unfortunate for the guy who got a mold into five and then missing land drops in a game that requires you to have mana to play. Yeah, and then your opponent strips your yeah, badlands. Okay. I wonder if he'll reveal the hand at the end if there was a disc in there that he could have been he could have played if, if that Badlands didn't get stripped, you know? Okay, so he's probably gonna tap. Drawing for turn. Oh okay, now with now with see like disenchant and tome my and the position that you know, Troll's been in all game, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think we can go to game two. Like, yeah, I mean, that's... Two. I think, personally, I would have scooped earlier, because I, I, you're just kind of, like, on a timer. And you're going to be on the play again, so I would probably try to be aggressively getting a, a him with, yeah. like, a Dark Ritual, turn one, to kind of discard my opponent's end a little bit. Yeah. See, so he told he tomed and drew a recall. What do we got? Oh, he wants to disenchant that's why. I was gonna say it could it could be interesting to uh to just recall for counterspell. And just have counterspell up. Yeah, so no matter what he plays, you're just Yeah, because you can you can recall for counterspell and then if he doesn't play anything, still disenchant and you put the counterspell in your hand. So if he did play something, you got the counterspell optional, so Exactly. But it's again again, like what does it all mean? It, it's all Yeah. We're at this point in the game and we're I mean, we're seeing he has three counter spells, I think, in the graveyard with a mana drain. He's yeah. got a. He, so it looks like he's got a couple of swords, a fell orc stone. So I mean, he's got enough mana to just get back two counter spells. And I think if an opponent sees recall for two counter spells, or even counter spell recall, uh, ancestral recall, then you probably just concede to that. Yeah, I mean, the writing's on the wall at this point, but it's just yeah, it's so unfortunate. Mulligan to five it's land drops. Yeah. Missing Mulligan to five, Miss Land Drop gets trip mined. Welcome, yeah. welcome to yeah, this. What is this? Bo Boreal? Yeah, Boreal. So he's gonna discard City Brass and Balance, Ancestral, Regrowth. I mean, okay. I think pretty much any two cards you get in the game, but if you get two counter spells, your opponent will concede. Yeah. I mean. Like can't do like not even doing anything on his on the turns and you're showing two counter spells. There's unless he's getting the, unless he's getting the ancestral to draw cards, using the regrowth to get the recall to have more cards to get back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like at any like whatever the yeah. targets were with recall, the game the game with, is over. And it looks like a time walk. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, the game, uh, the game ended when the tome came down and a, and a disenchant was drawn. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we'll see how this plays out. Okay, so swing at the factory. He's got a four-turn clock, taking two. Time walk being played. So he even regrowth for the like time walk if you wanted to like. Like can recall, right? You can recall for time walk and ancestral. Well, I mean, like. Yeah, there's just like so many. We're so far into game two. Yeah. Okay. Strip mine. It's okay. Some people. Uh, Some you have, people you have to admire the the resilience <laughs> of, or whatever the word is here that just says uh, no, no, you beat me. <laughs> Once you beat me, the game. <laughs> Once is I'm over. down to zero, that's when the game ends. All right. <laughs> yeah. Regrowth. Oh yeah, sorry. He recalled for regrowth, right? So I thought he regrowth. So he's yeah, regrowth. The time walk. Yeah. 
So I'm wondering if it's necessary to take the damage from the city. No. That's that that's the adrenaline pumping. Just tap yeah, just, I mean, just tap just tap. I stuff. mean even though you're you know you're gonna you know you're gonna win. It just I just try to avoid damage when possible. It's drunk on power. Yeah. <laughs> and then so there just seems like they're discussing Playing the time walk. Another factory. So it looks like he's scooping. Yeah, yeah, I think he was just showing him. Uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, the deck, the, the deck things there. You know, I don't think anything surprising really happened. Uh, maybe some questionable decisions, but at the end of the day, they still led to a victory. So uh, game two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a couple like my approach would have been slightly different, but I think it was just. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. considering how that game played out in terms of mulligans and draws and stuff in general, I think almost any line of play that the deck player took was going to lead to a victory. So, yeah. it really, it really just comes down to mulligan, unfortunate, land drop, unfortunate, and very timely strip mine. For all we know, there was a disc hiding in the in PO's hand, and uh, yeah, we don't chance, know. Never got a chance to play it. Yeah, when you're just getting stripped and stripped and then yeah. missing land drops, it's unfortunate. So I'm wondering like what the sideboard is gonna look like at this point. But um, well probably you know the the deck guy's gonna bring in the bull uh, the blue blasts, right? Yeah, I'm thinking blue blasts maybe. I don't know if circle of protection red is necessary for the troll no player, but I mean we got you know, if you're assuming earthquake and fireball are coming then Yeah. Anyways, we'll know. move to round number two here. Yeah. Well, hold on, and, just uh, one second. Let's see, like, the troll will go with. He'll bring in Red Blast, maybe, and Underworld Dreams, Maybe Blood Moon, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Blood Moon, yeah. really, like, if you screw up your opponent's mana base. Yeah. It's night-night, you know? So, I think Blood Moon for the Disco Troll player would be really, really essential. Because it just makes all his lands mountains, and he yeah. only has, what, maybe a Fireball? I find a lot of problems sometimes when you mulligan too many, sorry not mulligan, when you sideboard in too many three drops versus the deck, like I, I'd be tempted to bring in Oof, Underworld Dreams. another... That's a pretty good hand. Yeah, no lands no though. Lands, no lands though, it's so. a good hand if you want to gamble. You just yeah. play all your things and hope to uh... Yeah. Like you don't need to worry too much about having a Swamp for the Troll in this matchup since Plow doesn't care anyways about the Regenerate. Though Swamp yeah. does pump the Troll. But regeneration is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, regeneration yeah. is like super important for this uh, yeah. Yeah. deck to work properly. But yeah, you need to be careful though. When you board in too many three drops, you could get stuck with on um, with a very slow, slow hand. All right, let's go to the game here, I guess. So okay, seems like he has a strip mine, a balance, a couple of mana rocks. So plow to deal with the creature, strip mine to deal with lands, gives the deck player a chance to. Uh, I mean, get it looks his like it's a sword. So I mean, uh, yeah, sort the plow deck player is going to be able to kind of, I think, be able to control the board state a little bit early game until he top decks into something else. Yeah, probably feels uh, like the hand will will carry him to the to his other cards that he'll need yeah, later on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah. These, these hands are not working out really well. I wonder if it's his mana base is not... I mean, he's got like four Badlands, four Swamps, two Underground Seas, two Volcanics, two Factories, and one Library, and four Strip. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Seems fine. No Felwar Stones like the deck, and two less Moxen. The, the deck. So same yes. kind of greedy mana base, but less uh, less rocks to help out. There we go. So now... Strip the factory. Nice playing factory zone with a couple of mana rocks. City of Rats. Ooh, I think I feed my own strip mine. Like, you know, or I would just strip the strip maybe instead of letting him take away a blue source. 
Unless, of course, he's saying, well, you're on a low mulligan again and you need your lands, so go ahead and strip me if you want, but you'll have one, <clears throat> one less land, land again. Maybe it's like a tease. Maybe yeah. Maybe tease him. A troll. Okay. Oh, oh see, like here, maybe why, like there, I would think you strip the city first, right? So that you can't necessarily you can't get sort plowed. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sort the plowed. I thing. think that's like my first. I'd be like, strip city. Do you do anything in response? Yes, no. Oh, yes. Well, but, and there's the problem. Yeah. yeah so. Unfortunate little missequence there. Yeah. So had he played his... Had he used his strip mine first, yeah. his troll would have been on board. And from what I could see well, I from mean, his hand, does it look like he's a white menace? Yeah, he does. Or? He has another city. But, like, still, right? Yeah. But you don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, saying that, I think that should have been... That would have been the proper play, because at least he could have... You know. Mm -hmm. uh, what a shame. Yeah, the deck is just so strong. So so, though, I, I think the matchup comes more down to your hymns and racks than the trolls, I think. It's hard to say. Well, he's got another troll. Uh, maybe, maybe he was feeling confident behind the second troll. Yeah, that's true. But that's still, true. he could have two trolls. Now nah, he would get blown out by balance, of course. Yeah. But again, you know, what are you supposed to be afraid of everything? Yeah, you can't, you know, you can't cover all your bases. At some point, you just have to be like, screw yeah. it. Well, there's two schools of thought, right? I mean, I'm sure there's multiple, but two that I can think of right now is like, you either wait until you have enough cards to stop the opponent from doing what you're afraid of, or the other one is just go right away and make them have it, you know, force them to have the answers. Yeah. I think it's better to make them force to have the answers. Either force them to react versus them being. You know, if you force them to react right away, you know. Mm -hmm. Like some people, they get really scared really easily. They're like, I have to give her this threat immediately. Yeah. Because some people put like a bait out at first, and then the real threat comes after. Mm -hmm. So. City of Brass. Taking one damage. Red. He's playing balance, he's playing balance. He's gonna lose two gonna... lands to get rid of the troll. I don't know if he thought that out through. <laughs> it looks like he's kinda uncertain when he's grabbing that underground seat. Taking one. So maybe talking about what you're just talking about, being afraid of a, a threat, like you could take at least four or five smashes from that troll. Yeah. Yeah. And if any other one creature comes down in so the no, next five turns, like you just get two creatures instead of one, and you don't lose your two lands when mana is super important in your deck. Okay, so he's just really trying to get him off his mana base here. Oh, okay, bad lands. Does he have another ship? Yeah, oh, true. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Gotta love a four strip mine format, eh? So he's gonna take three to the face. Yeah, but see, there's also, there's also arguments there, right, from the troll player, where, I mean, maybe you're putting your opponent not on having 18 million strip mines, but you could just hold the land until you have an actual card to play, right? Because yeah. if, if playing the land, when you've already got three other mana sources, and with four mana, you're not doing anything, just hold the land in your hand. Hold oh, the land he red blasted the time walk. I probably would have kept it maybe for the ancestral. Yeah, or, or uh, counter spells, or, or brain geyser, yeah. or recall. I mean, yes, it's a time walk he's playing, but he's not doing anything right now. He's just trying to get one card quicker to an answer, top decking yeah. at this point. So it's not... Because if there was, a, especially if there was no land drop accompanying the time walk, he's not even yeah. getting that kind of, like, uh... Oh, yeah. good, good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Source of plowshares. There's no justice ever for the, <laughs> for the, 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 little, the little guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, and that's an abyss, I think. Yeah, you almost feel like when you're playing, like sometimes you're just playing against the deck, and you're just like, "Please, Mister, may I play a card?" Yeah. No, <laughs> just constantly. Oh, a library is interesting if a wheel of fortune is there. A wheel of fortune? There is no wheel of fortune in the troll deck. Oh. Hmm. I wonder if that rock egg would have been better used as a wheel of fortune. Wheel of fortune, yeah. To draw into maybe saying your burnt spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, looks like the, the troll player's got a bit of a mana base, at least. Uh, 
So, I mean... So, I mean... If that balance wasn't played, he'd have lands for the counter spells in his hand. He'd very have... nice. And the world dreams. Now this is where I think the deck player has to, like, really be aware of, like... Well, luckily for them, they have this disenchant at the very least, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Probably the Abyss. Okay. Abyss is fine if you're the other guy. I mean, like, at this point, you probably just want to... I mean, he has three trolls in the graveyard. Uh, or two exiled, actually, yeah. from swords to plushers. Yeah. And... Yeah. And the Torag, very nice. Yeah, Peter... I think Peter put himself in a lot of vulnerable positions with that balance. Counterspell and Brain Geyser. Excellent pull. Still has a Mana Drain, however. Yeah, I think another Counterspell. Can't see at the but moment. What yeah. would have been able to stop the Dreams and the, uh, him? But, and I mean, you still got a Factory. You could still come out. There you go. So, I mean... It's nothing to laugh about, too. I mean... Yeah, coming it's... in with two Factories every turn for four damage, even with Unworld Dreams on board, you're still winning that clock. Yeah, no, he'll need, like, uh, the Troll will need a Rack or something. Another him in Iraq, perhaps. Yep, there's the him. Okay, and do you have a follow up Iraq? No, it does not look it appears like not. Because hmm. that would be the same four damage that your factories are threatening. Yeah. And don't play the land. You need to be you need to be worried about the rack. You need to not play that land. That yeah. doesn't do anything. So, unless he draws a strip, it kind of slows on the clock a little bit. I mean, Troll has some good draws, right? Between the disc, which will stop the factories for a turn. Well, at least kill one. We'll blow up the Mox, we'll blow up the Abyss. You'll lose your, uh, your dreams, but like at least you're not dying. But unfortunately, the draws haven't been so kind to... Uh... Okay, so you drew a strip mine. Yeah, that's true. Still playing cards from his hand concerns me, but I think he's just he doesn't care at this point. He's just trying to like it's weird sometimes the tournament mindset you're just not thinking clearly or you're just forgetting certain things or certain cards that were played last game. Or but maybe he just doesn't care, right? Like it's possibly just he knows about it but just doesn't care. Like ah, play your play your rack. I'll kill you, or I'll find a disenchant. You know? Confidence yeah. confidence gets you far. I mean, he can't play the troll to block at yeah. least one turn. Troll's one good. of the factories. Yeah, troll's good. What's going on? So... What happened? Oh, he's uh, worried about the abyss. Yeah. I mean, it'll buy him some time, at least if he could draw into, like, a Bolt, or Shatter. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I think you still play the- you could still play the Troll. Ah. Ah, well, there it is. Factory is just too powerful. I only like seeing the deck win when I'm playing it. Otherwise, I agree, it is the enemy. <laughs> but when I'm <laughs> playing it, it's okay. It's fantastic when you're winning with the Factories. Mm. Yeah. And it looks like it's going to be 2-0 for the deck. It's a shame, too, for the troll player, because like he actually did have quite quite a good number of top decks uh, that would have helped the situation, like, two or three turns ago. Yeah. So even for the troll player to at least get around the Abyss a little bit, he would have to play, like, two creatures per turn, mm -hmm. which is, like, not feasible. It's not... Uh, Strip yeah. mine, okay. Kind of get rid of one. See, like, we, we don't need to put Peter's decisions to the test in this matchup since they are they won him the first game and are probably going to win him the second. But I would like to recreate this game exactly as it was played from the troll side and the deck side, but, like, use the lines that we said we would do instead and yeah. see if, like, we end up losing as a result. But I don't, you know, I, don't, I think, like I'm saying, maybe both ways you just win. Ah, no, yeah, Demonic Tutor. Deck is just that good. Oh, you get Plow for the Troll. Ancestral. Probably uh, Plow the Troll, no. 
I, I don't know. Like what you're, the... you're winning with beat down, just Paw Patrol. Probably. Give him three life, take away four. So put actually, him I mean, if you're feeling confident, I know. You can... Oh no, wait! Yeah, you don't have to Paw Patrol. There's an abyss. There's an abyss. There's no. no... Yeah, there's no need for that. I, so I'm even wondering, what's the what's would, he gonna yeah, tutor get, for? Disenchant or counterspell then? Like you just one for oneing with your opponent while you're winning the race? Yeah, I mean you're winning this race. Wondering who he's gonna demonic for? Fireball, fireball, win next turn with fireball. He's not a red mana source. Yeah, yeah, the mox. Oh yeah, the mox. Okay. Yeah, maybe. You swinging for this? To, yeah. Well, you probably have to just pass without swinging. But I think I would have thought that if he was going for a fireball, he would not have tapped his red mana source for the demonic. Oh, demonic uh, fireball next turn. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. So maybe you do attack this turn, let one of your factories die, put him to six, and then you fireball for six. Is there enough mana? No, eh? there is not enough mana. To no. Fireball for six. If the factory dies, there is not enough mana. So, didn't see what he got. Can't say. What the? Oh, t time walk? Did he get the time walk? He didn't tap for it, though. I'm very confused. Oh, he's still looking. Where did that time walk come from? How did it end up on top of the demonic? I don't know. Hmm. I think while we were talking, he probably got distracted and didn't see what was being done. But as far as I see, it's two lions still for his demonic that's being played. I do not know. Hmm. I can see Peter just patiently sipping his beer while. You mean Pio? Oh, yeah, Pio, sorry. Pio. I put a lot of stock in counter spells when I'm playing the deck. Yeah. Disenchant is also a safety measure if you're worried about the. Uh, I mean. The underworld dream or a rack coming down, you know? Maybe maybe disenchant is. I just find it weird that there's no Wheel of Fortune with like uh, underworld dreams in the side. That's like an automatic seven damage to the face. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? I mean, technically, when I'm typically when I'm playing earthquake, fireball, and lightning bolt style of decks, I want Wheel of Fortune to get more burns, more burn access. You know? Yeah, it looks like he got the disenchant. Yeah, disenchant. Yeah. See, just I, I don't want to see him use it on the dreams yet. Like you don't need to, right? Your your clock is still faster. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that one damage. Unless you're afraid of fireball, actually. <laughs> fireball is a thing that can get you. But if you're afraid of fireball, you should have got a counter spell. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Good, good. Yeah. Now, even there, right, you could argue disenchanting the soul ring so that, and then stripping the C so that there's no way fireball gets you. Right? Yeah, I think he's just feeling confident, though, with the two factories on board. Well, say again, like, I don't know, like, I'm not necessarily saying that his decisions are wrong, it's just not the ones that I would have made. That's what's nice about the deck, and also some of these, like, vintage -y old formats, is there are multiple lines. Yeah. They don't, you know? He's playing the Lotus. And is that a lethal swing? It looks like a lethal swing. Yeah, it looks like. So, I mean, it's it always interesting to see plays that you wouldn't make still lead to victory. Because it yeah. forces you to think about the ones that you would have made, about whether or not they were correct, or it just shows how good a certain deck is that multiple lines would lead to victory. And that's just what the deck is, I find, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of times throughout the matches where, you know, uh, like, their decision is not your decision, and to see it from other players' perspectives, you're yeah. just like it kind of gives you a, a moment to reflect and be like, okay, maybe that's another option I could consider next time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But you know, at the same time, it also hurts to get robbed by the <laughs> the, the shuffler, right? Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, mulligan, you know, taking two mulligans by missing yeah, land, it's missing land drops, three strip and then mine. A four strip mine format, yeah, yeah. and you're like, ah, so brutal. But uh, yeah, yeah so that good. was a pretty good match. Um, if you like the deck, you watch the deck do what the deck does. So. Yeah. So enjoy that if you're a deck fan. If you're not a deck fan, don't watch this video. Yep. Just kidding, watch this video. Alright, thanks everyone for watching. If you like it, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.